This is 2003. This is what the sun looks like. And the stars. This is the president. And this is the sun in 1955. And the stars. And the president. My parents got married in 1955. They had a child and they stayed married for 44 years until my mother died. Six months later, my father told me he was gay. I'm gay. So first thing I wanted to ask you, you know, I, I know that the film was inspired by your own life experience. Mm. I was curious if that was ever sort of difficult on the set, mm. with all those emotions that were, you know, that were so personal to you. You know, by the time you're on the set, by the time you've been writing it for years, and then you meet Ewan and Christopher, sure it's based on real things, but you're, you're on the set now, you're telling the story, you're talking to an audience. It's kind of separated from real things that happen. And I'll tell you, being really in a hospital with your dad on a ventilator is utterly different than making a film about it. <laughs> so much funner making a film about it. Uh, I love being a writer director. I love being on set. I love Ewan and Christopher. So the, for me, the experience was filled with that, like all this excitement I had to be finally making my film. Yeah, and you had sent personal letters to Ewan and Christopher to get them involved in the film, is that, mm -hmm. is that correct? I think people don't understand. I sent personal letters to like everybody. I sent personal <laughs> letters to the locations people, to crew members. As a director, you're the host of the party. You're the ambassador of the country that you're trying to create. And so you better write a letter to everybody. You're, and you're asking people to put their heart and soul into something for years and to start a really intimate relationship. I live in the Echo Park area, oh, so cool. I, of course, recognized yeah. a lot of the scenery in the film. Yeah. Um, could you talk about why you chose that area and how that sort of led to the mood and the tone of the movie? Well, I love, I live in Silver Lake, and I love the east side. Um, and I like having L.A. be like a real character that makes sense. When they're driving on Sunset, they're driving the right way. They go to Counterpoint Books, they go to Metropolitan Books. It's all places I know and love. And you edited the film in a very curious way, almost non-linear. Could you talk about that that decision? Or maybe it's like two linears, right? Or three <laughs> linears. Um, it starts in the present, and it's Oliver after his dad's passed away. But in my experience of that, when someone's gone, when someone just died, you're just flooded with memories all the time, and you're not in control of it. It's hard to stay in the present. So that felt like really natural to make the story that way. He's cruising along in the present, and he meets Anna. That, that brings back all these memories. And the memories aren't little memories, they're big ones, they're big, thick memories. So that felt real. Yeah, and, and the relationship between Anna and Oliver, I mean, they clearly fall for each other, but are almost scared of yeah. falling for each other too deeply. Could you talk about that sort of relationship? I feel like I was doing a portrait of things I for sure know about and experience, but so many men and women, gay and straight, that I've known my generation and younger, where love really brings out all of your demons or love brings out all the parts of yourself that you don't understand and are maybe afraid of and it's not easy and I was trying to talk about that and it's not love is wonderful it's exhilarating and it's something that can bring out a lot of fear is that where the title comes from because they're sort of beginning in, in love and, and beginning a new life for, for Christopher's character yeah kind of or you know I was trying to explain to someone yeah it's a story of a man does die in it but he doesn't act like he's dying he, he's hungry he's just starting he's just beginning you know and I was like oh that's interesting he's just beginning beginners and it seemed to fit the couple too because at the end they're just starting yeah you kind of get that sense at the, at the very final moment of the film like it's really the beginning of another story. Yeah, yeah. It was a difficult directing the dog. No, <laughs> no. I mean, he's so good. Cosmo's so amazing, and he comes with this amazing trainer named Matilde. And I love dogs. And he was just a real natural part of the set. And him and Ewan had such a real relationship. It was fun. Sometimes I wonder. Before Anna, I had four serious relationships. I let all of them fall apart. Only night. Just be happy about it, huh? The for the first time I saw I'm really in love. And I am once again with you. People like us, half of them think things will never work out. The other half believe in magic. And each kiss an inspiration. Sex. Life. Healing. Nature. Magic. The memory of love's refrain. This is what I'm supposed to feel like. Yeah, me too. <laughs>